Brown Innovation started out with great promise. Uh, it caused a lot of excitement uh, in, across the field. Why? Because there's currently about 1.2 billion people, 1.2 billion people in the world with hypertension. And about half of those are not controlled. And that's for a multitude of reasons. We've had a number of drug classes for a number of years. We know that if patients take their pills, most of them, their blood pressure comes down. But for whatever reason, half of these patients are not controlled in most countries. And some of the best countries, most advanced countries in the world for hypertension management, it's still only 60%, 65% at best. So there's a very large number of hypertensive patients who are looking for another option. Uh, real denovation uh, is based on uh, actually a surgical principle from 100 years ago, where surgeons in North America uh, would uh, operate on the sympathetic nerves within the abdomen. But, uh, it was an invasive procedure, they would cut those nerves and that would lead to reductions in blood pressure. Then drugs came along and that whole science fell by the wayside. It was revived in the uh, 90s by a group who realized that perhaps a catheter-directed treatment could do the same thing, which is to uh, deliver energy to the renal nerves, renal sympathetic nerves, disconnect those nerves and perhaps reduce blood pressure as a result. So simplicity uh, one and two showed great promise, open label studies. Uh, we did have randomized data, but small studies uh, without a sham control arm. Then came Simplicity Hypertension 3. So Hypertension 3 was meant to be you know, the, the trial that introduced renal denervation to the world. Uh, it was a, a study of over 500 patients, randomized two to one to uh, treatment with renal denervation versus a sham control, so the patients would have a renal angiogram rather than renal denervation. Uh, unfortunately, that trial was negative. We had a 14-point drop in blood pressure in the treatment arm and a 12-point drop in the sham arm, an enormous drop from what appeared to be a simple procedure of renal angiography with no interventional treatments. Uh, this led to the, a lot of debate. Did renal denervation work? Uh, what happened in that trial? And from that, uh, a very extensive consultation process took place. Uh, uh, the company that ran that trial, Medtronic, came back with uh, a group of investigators uh, and the spiral program. So uh, we have now a new catheter, a new uh, research program, and a different patient group, and a different way of delivering the trial. And those results were reported yesterday at the European Society of Cardiology from the first of those trials. Spiral off, uh, it was uh, 80 patients, so relatively small numbers. Um, they actually stopped the trial early at the point of a pre-specified analysis uh, of 80 patients, uh, where uh, 38 patients had the treatment, 42 had a sham control procedure of just having renal angiography. Uh, it showed that there was a significant drop in blood pressure from having the treatment. Uh, 10 millimeters of mercury, uh, on reduction in office systolic blood pressure, uh, and a 5.5 reduction uh, in um, ambulatory systolic blood pressure. Uh, the sham control was mu much better conducted. Uh, we had only a 2.3 millimeter drop in blood pressure in the uh, office arm and a 0.5 drop in the ambulatory blood pressure arm. And I think that reflects the rigor of the trial, that uh, there were a lot of things were tightly controlled for. These patients weren't taking any drugs at all. They had to have six weeks of washout or never be on drugs in the first place in order to enter the trial. Uh, it was a relatively short period of follow-up to report the endpoint of three months and so there's not a lot of time for patients to lose weight or start exercise programs, change their lifestyle. And so with no drugs to confound the results and a relatively short period of follow-up so that the patients don't change their phenotype too much, uh, we were able to minimize the sham effect and create um, a significant treatment effect, a clinically potentially important treatment effect uh, with relatively tight confidence intervals that gave us confidence that this technology it does continue to show promise. Yeah, we certainly need more data. I think uh, the key understandings that we gained from HTN3 uh, were that there were a number of variables that made uh, studying this technology difficult. So those have been controlled for in the spiral program. So firstly, the original catheter was quite difficult to use, uh, quite operator dependent, and this single point catheter uh, led to uncertainty as to whether one had managed to denovate all four quadrants of the renal artery, which is almost certainly necessary to achieve a clinical response. The new catheter automatically de denovates all four poles. It's an itinol catheter that takes the shape of the renal artery and gives you quadrantic ablations without too much technical difficulty. 
We've also learned a bit more about the renal nerve since then, that if we extend treatments distally within the renal artery using radio frequency, we probably get a more consistent and better response, and that's because the renal nerves come towards the kidney from uh, into range of the uh, catheters. Uh, we've learned now that uh, if you take patients and rigorously control whether they're off drugs altogether or on a very standardized set of drugs, urine test them, uh, and look at their results with ambulatory blood pressure as well as office, that we can see an effect size. Uh, and this has given us a more reliable trial format within which to go ahead and test. So I think we're now looking at a pivotal trial that's gonna be global. Medtronic are already talking to the FDA and planning that trial that was announced yesterday. We're looking at hundreds of patients. It's gonna to have to deploy <clears throat> all of those things that I said about better catheters, uh, better treatment technique, more rigorous control of the patient population who come into the trial. This is mild to moderate hypertensives. It wasn't the severe hypertensives from HTN3. And uh, a, a trial structure that uh, pays attention to detail like the spiral program has. Uh, a very difficult trial to deliver. It's the most complex trial I've ever been involved with. Uh, and um, uh, it, it will be quite an undertaking to deliver that pivotal trial, but I think it's coming, it's coming quite soon.